Hey guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winner. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today I want to talk a little bit more about Disney Solo, and so I wanted to start a series um, just talking about more specific things about going to Disney World uh, solo. So today's topic is going to be about dining solo. And I think this is a really big one because a lot of people are afraid to dine solo no matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in Disney World or your own city. It's kind of a scary thought to walk into a sit-down restaurant and be waited on and have attention from a waiter and maybe even the people all around you as a single individual at a table. And yeah, it can totally feel like an all eyes on you situation. I think that's definitely true, but I think it's only true because most of it's in your head. I think a lot of it is the anxiety built up of like, what's this gonna be like? And is everyone gonna be looking at me? And is my waiter not gonna pay enough attention to me or pay too much attention to me and make me feel awkward? That's all stuff in your head before you even get there. So before I even get into like where to eat and what to do, the first thing you need to do is get rid of those thoughts. Those thoughts are not gonna do anything to help you. They are not buried in any sort of truth. There's no proven facts that everyone's gonna like point and laugh at you while you're eating your meal alone and crying salty tears over your, I don't know, Mickey waffles, whatever it is. Um, it's probably not gonna happen, so get past the fear. Um, but if you wanna make the situation as least awkward as possible, there are definitely some restaurants that are more um, conducive to a friendlier, more comfortable setting than maybe some others. So from my experience, the easiest way into dining solo at Disney is quick service. So let's not even talk about table service yet. Let's just talk about quick service locations. There's a ton in Magic Kingdom, obviously they're in all parks. Think of like Cosmic Rays, which is Rob's favorite, this I know. Um, think of, um, you know, any sort of Peco Spill, like any sort of quick walk-in and you speak to a cast member and you order through them and you grab your food on a tray from other cast members and then you find your own table and you sit down and you eat. I think that is the best way in to testing the waters of dining alone because you don't have to make a reservation for one which might already feel weird when you have to like walk up to a uh host and say hey table for one <laughs> just me hey everybody just announcing just me just me you know like if that's something that's gonna make you feel really uncomfortable quick service is great because nobody needs to know your business for all they know um, you are going to get some food and bring it back to people who are already waiting for you at a table. Nobody knows what your situation is. And if you're considering moving on to table service, there are definitely some ways to make it easier for you. So one thing that you can do is go to restaurants that have bar service. So restaurants where you can sit at the bar and still get the full menu, but you don't have to have a whole table. This means that you don't have to necessarily make a reservation. A lot of these places you can walk in and grab a seat. Now, again, that could be iffy. Like you might think you're gonna walk into 50's Primetime Cafe and be totally fine walking up to the tune-in bar, or it could be really busy. So you are taking that chance if you're deciding like, okay, I'm just gonna walk in and go to the bar because a lot of these situations you cannot reserve a seat at the bar. If you're gonna make a reservation, it's a table. Still, there are more chances as one person that you're gonna get a seat at the bar. You can do the same at like Beaches and Cream. You can do the same at a lot of restaurants. Um, and you get the full menu, but you get to sit in a space that doesn't feel like you're taking up space. I feel like a little bit of what I felt when I was there was like, I'm literally taking up a table by myself and how rude of me. And I mean, clearly not, right? Like that table is probably for two people max. So me being there as one person wasn't the hugest difference. But if you feel like you don't wanna have your own table, you don't wanna be in the middle of the dining room, definitely sit at the bar. If you're ready to move on to a table, it is possible. Uh, definitely look to restaurants that might not be as crazy fancy or date night-esque. So like, I might not wanna go to California Grill. Granted, they do have bar service too. So maybe I'll sit at the bar at California Grill. 
I might not want to sit in the dining room. It feels like a fancier, more upscale restaurant. It's something I'd want to share with somebody. I personally might feel a little weird sitting there by myself. But I didn't feel weird at Skipper Canteen, which is a pretty laid back table service um, restaurant. It's the new Jungle Cruise one in Adventureland. And we're in, I'm in Skipper's Canteen. Here's the exorbitant menu. I'm in the mess hall. I just had the most hilarious person greet me. They're all apparently very funny. Same sort of sense of humor as Jungle Cruise. I have no idea what I'm gonna have. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm really excited to eat in here. Um, I'm probably gonna have to check out the other rooms later too. This is it. And it's like got a more laid back atmosphere. Everyone's kind of talking into their own thing. And I never felt at all like I was singled out. And I think that's another thing is like, you have to trust your cast members to not single you out because chances are they see this all the time. I've said this in my in my solo tips video, like you are not the first solo traveler, you will not be the last one. There are plenty of cast members who on their days off just go to the parks to like chill and I'm sure that they eat at places too. The people who are serving you it's not like they're like, oh my god, I've never seen someone sitting at a table by themselves before. They've definitely seen this before. They know how to handle it. They know how to talk to you and give you attention without calling attention to the fact that you're sitting there alone. So trust your cast members. Um, they are definitely going to treat you right without making you feel weird. But like I said before, you know, especially when you're a non-social person, but in general, you know, unless you're a big people watcher, which I am. I had a total fine time just watching people at other tables. Um, bring something with you. Bring a book or a Kindle to read. Take a look at your plans for the day. Go over your app and your fast passes. Spread out that map. Like, get into something while you're there and something that's, like, either enjoyable to you, like reading, or helpful to your trip, like going over your plans because you're gonna be sitting there for at least a good, like, I don't know, 45 minutes. You might as well make the most of it. Places that I think that are really good for, for table service um, are, like I said, I mean, Skipper Canteen was great. Uh, Hollywood Brown Derby wasn't as weird as I thought it was gonna be. Holy moly, I'm stupid full. Hollywood Brown Derby was delicious, but too much food for me, especially because I started with tomato soup and then tried to add the chicken sandwich. It's like a really bad idea. I feel like any of the restaurants that have pretty traditional table layouts would be fine. Restaurants I think might be weird for somebody who's not used to dining on their own. 50s Primetime Cafe at a table. Why? Because the whole thing of 50s Primetime is that your waiter or your waitress makes fun of you. They come there, they tell you get your elbows off the table and finish all your green beans and they pick on some people and they call other people princess and part of the whole fun of the experience is like seeing how they interact with your whole group and you might feel a little weird by yourself and like watching these other group dynamics happen. Another one that might be tough is Sci-Fi Dine-In. Mostly because if you're sitting in one of the cars, they will pair you up with like, a, you know, a family of three. Because if, you, if you've ever seen it, the cars are like a drive-in. It's like two in the front, two in the back. And they will throw you in a car with other people and they call you a hitchhiker, which is hilarious, but also kind of awkward and kind of calls attention. Like, hey guys, you have a hitchhiker. This random single person is gonna join your family for lunch and there ain't nothing you're gonna do about it, and then you're gonna sit here in awkward silence. And another one that might be kind of weird is dinner shows, like uh, Hoopty Doo, for example, where you're going to be sitting in a circular table with other people. We have a pretty cool table. We're on the side, and the stage is right here. Last time we sat up there. Up there. And it's totally fine if you're at least two people, and then you're like, oh, go to a couple, and we'll get to know the other couples at the table. But when you're that one person, personally, I would feel a little weird. I would feel like that family style, Ohana is another example of family style, where you sit with complete strangers. It's a lot easier to deal with the slight weirdness of sitting with complete strangers when you have friends or family with you as well. But doing it completely by yourself, 
again, is for the brave. And this is not me saying don't do these restaurants. If you are like all gun ho, if you're like, damn it, I love Ohana, I wanna eat there anyway, do it. I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying from personal experience, or maybe if you're a first timer and you're not super outgoing, you might not wanna do these experiences, but by no means am I saying that you cannot eat there solo. I'm just saying, if you're thinking about it for the first time, might not be the best places to go for a first time uh, experience, so. Anyway, I promise you that dining at Disney solo is not as bad as you think it is. Um, it is worth it, it is wonderful, you get to eat where you want. I got to go to restaurants that I've never been to before that were either hard to get reservations for with more people or just like people were meh on the menus and I wanted to go and I thought that was really great. I love the experience of dining in Disney. I really am glad I pushed myself to do a few different table service experiences. It made it so that next time I go solo, which I 100% am next year, I've already made that decision. I know I can do it again. So like, that's it. The fear, the feeling is gone. I, I did it, it's done. It'll never stop me again. So don't let it stop you. Go eat wherever you wanna eat. Enjoy it, bring something to do that's entertaining or people watch. Just have faith in it. Talk to your cast members, they're gonna be great. And just have a whole bunch of fun with it because it's your vacation and you deserve it. That's it guys. Thanks for watching another video. Hopefully some of these tips have helped, made you feel a little bit better about the idea. If you have had any great experiences at specific restaurants or maybe weird solo experiences at restaurants, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in hearing what other people think. If you're thinking about going on a solo trip, let me know too, because I wanna encourage you to go do it. So definitely let me know in the comments. You can also tweet me at IvyWinterYT. And keep on the lookout, I'm still putting out videos from my solo trip up on this channel. So if you want to see what it was actually like to be alone, you can, because I was there and I filmed it. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I always appreciate everybody who watches my videos, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye.